Hi folks, welcome back. Thank you for watching. Please do hit subscribe if you haven't done so yet. It really does help when you do that. So today folks, this here is my recently acquired Rickenbacker 330. And as this guitar is currently, it's totally stock. So if you go to a guitar shop in 2022 and ask for a Ricky 330, this is what they will bring down off the shelf for you. But to my ears, this guitar doesn't currently sound as what I associate with a classic Rickenbacker tone. So what I'm going to do is make two videos of me modifying this guitar to be much more vintage correct. And then a third video of it in its final form going through a variety of different amplifiers. But I'm probably going to release that final video first. So fingers crossed, last month you will have seen a video of this guitar with toaster pickups through some classic amps sounding glorious. But I haven't shot that video yet because I haven't done the mods, if that makes any sort of twisted sense. Anyway, in terms of the two mod videos, next month I'm going to compare these standard high gain ceramic magneted pickups to some vintage correct Alnico magneted toaster pickups. And I think that'll be really revealing about the differences between the actual pickup types in these classic shaped guitars. But this month I want to start by looking at the electronics under the hood and see whether we can make this guitar sound much more classic simply by changing the wiring before we get into spending big money on pickups because what Rickenbacker do to wire their guitars nowadays is pretty different to what they did back in the 50s and the 60s. Not so much in terms of the actual schematic, but in terms of the component values used. Because this guitar has 330k pots for all five controls, the two volumes, the two tones, and the kind of blend pot that loads down the neck pickup to make it a little bit quieter and balance it out with the bridge pickup. So 330ks all round. Now, when it comes to converting it to vintage spec, there's two problems we run into. Firstly, it is really, really difficult to find a vintage correct Rickenbacker wiring schematic online. They just don't really exist. There's a few for Ricky bases, but for six string, there's only one I can find. Gibson 50s wiring and Telecaster wiring and Broadcaster blend wiring, those schematics are everywhere. But for some reason, nobody's really ever drawn up one for a vintage Rickenbacker, aside from Gemini pickups in New York. So full credit to them for the schematic I'm going to use to wire this guitar today. They've done what nobody else dared to do and draw out a vintage correct Rickenbacker wiring diagram. So it's very difficult to find out exactly what Rickenbacker used. But when it comes to the component values, they used 250K logarithmic pots for the volumes, 500K linear taper pots for the tones, and a 500K log pot for the blend. So very different from 330K all round. But the second difficulty we run into with vintage Rickenbacker wiring is there's one element to it that's kind of shrouded in mystique. And when they started doing this and when they stopped doing this, I don't really know. Because I think in the late 50s, when this shape of guitar first came out, when it was known as the Capri, well, not the 330, Rickenbacker wired a 0.0047 capacitor in series after the bridge pickup, or specifically on the output of the switch for the bridge pickup because Rickenbackers are wired differently to Gibsons because the pickups are wired directly to the switch, not to the volume pot. That's kind of done in reverse. But what that capacitor does essentially is act as a fixed high pass filter for the bridge pickup. So it shelves off a lot of low end. And when I think of those early 60s Rickenbacker tones, a lot of them do sound very, very thin and filtered. Almost like you're listening to it through an AM radio, it's just mid-range and presence and nothing much else. But not everybody likes having that capacitor in line. So some people will install it, other people will take it out. Some people have it on a push-pull pot on the volume controls, they have the best of both worlds. But both the schematic with and without the capacitor are kind of vintage correct up to a point. So what I'm going to do today is three excerpts of playing. Firstly, play this guitar in its entirely stock modern form. Then I'm going to wire it using all the vintage spec components that I've got sat on the desk behind me here, but without the capacitor, and then wire it with the capacitor and compare the modern to the two correct vintage wiring setups because I want to see whether that gives me more of the classic Rickenbacker sound without spending a fortune on hand-wound toaster pickups. So that's what we're going to do today, folks, to see if we can take this guitar and make it sound more like a classic 
Chimey Rickenbacker from the early 60s. So without further ado, folks, here we go. <laughs> Thank you. 
are, folks. Now, please do comment underneath. Let me know which of those three wiring setups was your favourite and why. I love chatting nerdy guitar stuff with you folks down in the comments section. But some really interesting results today, right? Now, of course, the number one most obvious difference was the effect that that 0.0047 capacitor has wired in series coming off the switch for the bridge pickup. It dumps a huge amount of low end to ground and really does drop the relative output of the bridge pickup. And it really made the bridge sound thin and scratchy and weedy compared to the big boomy neck pickup. Now, I don't know this for certain, but I would speculate that the time Rickenbacker introduced that capacitor into their wiring would have been the same time they introduced the fifth kind of blend control to balance out the outputs of the two pickups. And then you can use your other four controls as you would on any normal guitar. Because today I was dying to get stuck into that blend control to balance the neck down to the bridge when it had that capacitor in line. So it would seem to make sense to me if that were the case. But overall, I really don't think the vintage configuration of pots made the guitar sound brighter and more chimey at all. If anything, it sounds a little bit darker and quieter. Now on paper, that would make a bit of sense because on the volume controls especially, which tend to have a larger bearing on the sound of the guitar in terms of what value you put in there, we were going from 330K down to 250. Or actually these are the VI pots I put in here and they're 10% overvalued. So they were kind of 280, 290K, but still a notable reduction in pot value. And that will make the guitar sound darker. But at the same time, we were going to a much higher value of tone pot and even with everything on 10 putting a higher value tone pot in puts less pull on the pickups of the guitar I know that's not how it works in electronics terms but it will make the guitar sound brighter by putting a higher value tone pot in and that should kind of brighten it up so it just goes to show that you can't believe everything you read on forums when people say that the modern Rickenbacker wiring is the reason the sole reason why modern guitars sound darker and less chimey than the old ones it really doesn't seem to be true does it it makes it sound a little bit darker if anything at least in this guitar with these pots but I'm really looking forward to getting the toaster pickups in here and see what difference they make to the overall sound because I have a theory that that kind of bitey up mid-range thing that's kind of grating on me a little bit about this guitar will be down to these high gain pickups compared to the toasters. I'm hoping the toasters have a slightly more kind of scooped mid-range and a bit more chime up top but we'll see. So thank you ever so much for watching folks. Please do let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments section. I love hearing from you guys. I hope this video was interesting and useful for you. Please do carry on subscribing. I know I always say it but it makes a huge difference when you do that and I will see you very very soon. Bye bye!